Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, October November paper 22, and this is the 42 component. So let's get down to it. Question number one: Three colorless gases A, B, C, and D are shown. Uh, a is more dense than air. B is more dense than air. C is less dense than air. Okay, there's information. Let's see what exactly are they asking. State which set of apparatus P, Q, or R is most suitable to collect gas A. So gas A is more dense than air and soluble in water. So you cannot you collect it over water. And since it's more dense than air, you'll have to uh, collect it by downward delivery. So P is downward delivery. So P is more suitable for this purpose. R is used to collect gas B. R is used to collect gas B because obviously the gas is insoluble in water. So just why Q is not used to collect gas B? Why is Q? not use q is for up for delivery it is for gases which are lighter than air but b is denser than air so you will write because uh, b is more dense than air b is more dense than air okay uh, state why r is more suitable than p to collect gas p now he's asking you why r is more suitable than p why R is more suitable than P. Now P is downward delivery. So since B, gas B is more dense than air, we can use the gas. We can also use the apparatus P for this. But we chose this one. And why is that? Because uh, if you use P, you will not, you will never know when the gas jar is full. But if you collect it over water, if you collect it over water, the gas will be collected over here. The gas will be collected over here. And once the jar is full, uh, this will create pressure inside and this level would rise. Once this level starts rising, you will know that the jar is full. But with P, you will never know when the jar is full. So that's what you will write here. That uh, why R is more suitable than P? Uh, because using P, using P, it would, it would not it would not be possible to know when the gas jar is full when gas jar now this should uh, this should tell you that this apparatus is actually known as gas jar when gas jar is full so state why r is not used to collect gas c why r is not used to collect gas c because gas c is soluble in water it is soluble in water uh, it is soluble in water. C. C is soluble in water. Write full sentences. Do not skip from one sentence to another. Okay. Now, the next question is question number two. It's an electrolysis and uh, the, you, they are electrolyzing two aqua solutions. Right. They are electrolyzing two aqua solutions. Name of that is E. What is E? He is a simple beaker. Complete the table. First, you electrolyze potassium iodide. Name of the product is iodine. And with the, what will be the observation? What is the color of the iodine? It's a brown liquid. It's just brown. And uh, at cathode, you have aqueous potassium ion. You'll have hydrogen ion and potassium ion as candidates for cathode. Since hydrogen is lower in the reactivity series, so hydrogen will be formed. And with the hydrogen, there will be bubbles or fizzing or effervescence uh, with sulfuric acid and anode oxygen will be released and the observation for oxygen would again be effervescence and uh, on the cathode again with sulfuric acid you have two only one option actually hydrogen ion so hydrogen gas will be formed here as well describe the test used to identify oxygen gas uh, the test is you use a a glowing splint we use a glowing splint and the observation is that uh, it relights when you expose a glowing splint to oxygen it relights okay so question number three is uh, the reaction between a metal and an acid in each experiment the student adds hydrochloric acid to magnesium 
the volume of hydrogen in apparatus f is recorded after every 30 seconds name apparatus f it's called a gas syringe we're basically collecting a gas we're basically collecting a gas so name of piece of apparatus that student could use to keep the temperature of the conical flask and its contents constant mm, you can use a cotton wool but that will not uh, keep it constant you can use a water bath a, therm a thermostatically controlled water bath thermostatically controlled like thermostatically controlled means you can control the temperature of the water bath thermostatically controlled water bath if you're using a water bath at a constant temperature that would keep the uh, contents of the flask uh, constant constant uh, temperature of the flask constant you know this is something like this this is called a water bath Water bath is basically used for indirect heating as well. Indirect heating के लिए use होता है water bath. For example, for flammable substances where you cannot heat things directly, you will use substance, you will use equipment like water bath. Like there is like a whole, there is a beaker sort of a thing, a wide-ish beaker, and there is water inside it. So hydrogen is a product of this reaction. Describe a test used to identify hydrogen. The test is you use a lighted splint. Use a lighted splint. And lighted splint pops or produces a pop sound. The next part is the student uses the measurement of volume as time increases to determine the rate of reaction. Basically, you divide volume by time. State a different measurement that a student could use, could make as time increases to determine the rate of this reaction. Uh, how can you determine the rate? Mm -hmm. What exactly are you doing? We will have to see that first. Okay, you are adding hydrochloric acid to magnesium and the volume of hydrogen is recorded after 30 seconds. Okay, after every 30 seconds you are recording the volume of hydrogen. So you are, so you are basically uh, required to calculate the rate, right? We actually uh, discussed two methods to calculate. One was uh, collection of volume, and the other one is loss in mass. So, if you can just remove the bung and let the gas go, you can actually uh, use that. Like, you can use the mass of the contents in the beaker, mass of the contents and flask to actually measure the rate of reaction, right? Okay, the next one is, uh, uh, so you did three experiments, X, Y, and Z, and for each experiment, the, con uh, the content temperature is different, and then you're adding HCl, catalyst is not used. So you need to identify two variables that are kept constant in this investigation. Right, so since you're using HCl, so you'll have to make sure that the volume of the acid is the same that you're using. Volume of acid has to be the same. And also concentration of acid has to be the same. And then you're also using magnesium. You have to make sure mass of magnesium is the same. Or you can also say that the size of the magnesium particles has to be the same. Right? So that you can only monitor the change in temperature. You should know that whenever you are monitoring uh, the effect of one variable, you'll have to keep all the other variables constant. So describe how the graph is used to decide which experiment has the greatest rate. Okay, so this one is the fastest. The, uh, the leftmost curve is the fastest curve, and the rightmost curve is the slowest curve. So at the highest temperature, reaction rate would be highest, right? For this, so uh, the leftmost curve has to be Z, and the rightmost curve has to be X, and this would be Y. Describe how the graph is used to decide which experiment has the greatest rate. Uh, the experiment which has the greatest gradient will have the greatest rate. That the experiment which has the greatest slope or the greatest gradient will have the greatest rate. So Z has the greatest gradient. Or you can also say that uh, that Z curve jo hai, it flattens off flattens off the earliest. The reaction uh, that is the fastest is going to get horizontal uh, on priority. 
यानी कि जो रिएक्शन सबसे तेज होगा वो सबसे पहले उसकी लाइन हॉरिजॉन्टल हो जाती है सो राइट अ लेटर इन ईच बॉक्स ऑन द ग्राफ टू टू आइडेंटिफाई एक्सपेरिमेंट्स एक्स वाई एंड सी आई जस्ट ऑलरेडी डिड दैट डिस्क्राइब ऑफ द ग्राफ शोज दैट द रिएक्शन स्टॉप सो दीज द कर्व्स लेवल ऑफ और द कर्व्स फ्लैट एन द हॉरिज सो यू कैन से द ग्राफ लेवल्स ऑफ that is the terminology that is used in your marking scheme that the graph levels off okay you can also say that the curve becomes horizontal explain why the reaction stop reaction stop because reactants are consumed reactants are consumed or to be more precise you can say magnesium is consumed because hcl is not going to be consumed totally because hcl is in excess so better answer would be magnesium is consumed or magnesium is used up right okay so question number 4 is a planning question a student is provided with two bottles labeled a and b let's make two bottles we try to make two bottles the two bottles a and b okay one of the bottle contains sodium potassium chloride kcl and the other bottle contains calcium chloride cacl2 when potassium chloride dissolves in water uh, the change is endothermic when calcium chloride dissolves in water the change is exothermic plan experiments based on dissolving the solids in water to decide which compound in each bottle which compound is in each bottle that a mein kya hai aur b mein kya hai and which compound produces the greatest heat change per gram of solid there for that you obviously have to uh, measure the temperature you we'll have to measure the change in temperature only then you can decide okay uh so your plan may use any of the products normally found in the laboratory but you cannot use any more chemicals your plan must state all the measurements you need to take and your plan must use the same experimental procedure for each solid so you have uh, two bottles named a and uh, b right so i'll add both of them in the same beakers i will call them beaker a and beaker Okay, let's do this. Let's do this in a very systematic manner. Okay, what exactly do you need to do? सबसे पहले label करें. Label the contents of bottle A. Okay, instead pour and label the contents of bottle A. Okay, in fact, let's not do this here. Uh, in fact, let's go more pieces of literature. Let's do this even from <clears throat> when at the pieces of literature or pieces. Okay. First of all, you need to have you need to add water. So pour equal volume of water or equal volume of water. in beakers a and b in beakers a and b or you can use conical flask a and b okay note the initial temperature note the initial temperature you can also use how do we do that using thermometer write these type of questions in utmost peace just make a strategy and then start writing okay note the initial temperature using thermometer once you have done that now you'll have to add the contents of bottle a and bottle b now uh, pour the contents pour the contents of bottle a and b in beakers a and b once you have done that you will have to mix them mix the contents with water or you can simply write stir the contents with water once you have done that so one of them will uh, produce an endothermic change and one of them will produce an exothermic change 
now note the temperature temperature of beaker a and beaker b if you are using a beaker a small beaker note the temperature of beaker a and beaker b so if there is a temperature rise if there is a temperature rise rise in one of the beakers in one of the beakers that beaker will have that beaker will have hmm exosome can or yeah the beaker will have calcium chloride also link it link it to the fact that the reaction is exothermic we'll have calcium chloride and the reaction as the reaction as the reaction or as the change is exothermic thermic and for temperature drop and uh, the beaker which temperature drop the beaker with temperature drop will have uh what was the other solid potassium chloride will have potassium chloride potassium chloride as the change is endothermic endothermic okay and uh, you already so you have actually told them uh, which compound is in each bottle now which compound will produce the greatest heat change the compound which will have the greatest temperature change Okay. Now, uh, the compound that produced the greatest temperature change, <clears throat> greatest temperature change, temperature change will have the greatest heat change. okay so whenever uh, the planning questions come now just take a bit of time and plan it in your head make bullet points separately on a separate page or something that what exactly are you going to cover go in go through it step wise just think of it as an exercise that uh, you are actually creating an instruction manual for someone else that if someone else wants to do this experiment he can simply read your instructions and do it it should be that clear and that detailed okay i hope you got it okay so the next question is a titration one okay so solution k is a sulfuric acid the student determines the concentration of k using a method that involves titration The student makes twenty centimeter of K using a pipette. The student makes up to fifty centimeter cube with distilled water. Whenever you are making a solution with distilled water, you will be using a volumetric flask. If you if you are making a two fifty centimeter cube uh, solution with distilled water, that means you have taken. Uh, let me draw it a better. Something like, yeah, my drawing is really poor. I'm really sorry. I'll have to erase it first. And let me just attempt this. again although i don't trust my drawings but it's always better to just draw the diagram just for more clarity your information your information gets summarized so i'll take a 22 50 cm cube volumetric flask i'll add 20 cm cube of k to it 
and then you added water into it until a 250 cm cube solution is made that's what it means this is called the solution l now this is called the solution l which has the sulfuric acid and water now name another piece of apparatus that could be used instead of a pipette to accurately measure 20 cm cube uh, instead of a pipette you can always use a burette these are the two most accurate apparatuses because they can measure up to 0.01 readings 0.01 or 0.1 0.1 readings like if you want to measure 24.1 you can use a pipette or a burette so name the container in which solution l is made i just told you that it's called a volumetric flask volumetric flask it's also known as a standard flask a pipette is used to transfer 250 25 cm cube of solution l into a conical flask now from the l solution which was 250 cm cube uh you took 25 cm cube out of it into a conical flask you added 25 cm cube of l in a conical flask name the other piece of apparatus that is used with a pipette had to transfer uh, at the end of the pipette you use a pipette filler okay that kind of a bulb sort of a thing something like this something like this which the old school uh, pp apparatus hota na uske end pe bhi lagwa hote okay this is called a pipette filler a pipette filler okay in the deep part the student adds three drops of methyl orange to solution l and l was an acid so methyl orange will give a color that it gives in an acid and then places the flask on a white tile white tile pe kis tarah se rakhte hain you put the uh, flask on the white tile so that you can see the color change uh more properly more accurately the student fills the burette with potassium hydroxide the qh is added to the flask until there is a color change state which liquid should be used to wash out the burette before filling the burette with qh you should know that you will always wash the burette with the substance that you are going to use the burette for next for example you are going to use burette for potassium hydroxide then you will have to wash the burette with potassium hydroxide Okay, so there is no dilution or that. There is no dilution. Okay, uh, so obviously we write potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide. Either write AQ at the end or just write the whole thing aqueous potassium hydroxide. Explain why the conical flask is placed on a white tile. To see the color, so see the color change. I do not. start sentences like that uh mm, it enables it enables the color change to be seen more accurately oh it's such a complicated sentence it enables the color change to be seen more effectively to be seen more clearly it will use a better sentence here okay placing it on white tile would make you see the color change more effectively it's so easy na just you can simply write uh, to see the color more clearly state the color change of the methyl orange indicator at the end point it changes from an acidic medium to a basic medium in acidic medium uh, methyl orange is red and in the basic medium methyl orange is orange or yellow okay oh oh okay moving on right so a student does three titration that is pretty easy titration one the initial reading is 0 and the final reading is 24.1 and 2 for experiment 2 the initial reading is 25.2 and the final reading is 46.5 third titration the initial reading is 11.2 and the final reading is 35. Point. no it is sorry i was just copying it from the marking screen to do it quickly this much it up so what is it it's 32567 32.7 volume of potassium hydroxide added is a subtract 24.2 
46.5 minus 25.2 will be 21.2. 32.7 minus 11.2 would be 21.5. Now you'll have to pick the best titration results. The best titration results are those which are closest to each other. So a lot of students will choose experiment 1 and 2 because this is 0.2 and this is 0.3 but they will not see that this is actually 24. Okay, so experiment number 2 and 3 are actually closest to each other. Now you need to calculate the average volume from these best titration values. That will be 21.4. Calculate the number of moles of KOH in average volume and you are given the concentration. That is pretty easy. Moles is equal to concentration into volume. So concentration is 0.1 and average volume is 21.4 divided by 1000 to align the units of volume. And the answer would be 2.14 into 10 to raise power minus 3 moles. Okay. Okay. Jay. So use this equation, the reaction. Calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid. You just calculated the volume, the moles of potassium hydroxide. So you know the moles of potassium hydroxide. You can calculate the moles of sulfuric acid. It's a 2 ratio 1. So if the potassium hydroxide moles are 2.14 into 10 to raise power minus 3, what will be the moles of H2SO4? <laughs> we will just be multiplying this by, <coughs> sorry, dividing this by 2. So the answer would be 1.07 into 10 to raise to minus 3. Calculate the number of moles of H2SO4 in 250 centimeter cube. We just calculate the moles of H2SO4 in 25 centimeter cube. So in 25 centimeter cube, the moles are 1.07 into 10 to raise to minus 3. So in 250, how many will be the moles? So you will just be uh, multiplying this by 10. Okay, and you will get the answer. This would be 0 0.0107. 0 0.0107. Reduce the number of moles of H2SO4 in 20 centimeter cube of solution K. It will be the same. Moles will remain the same. The solution K was what? If you remember, the solution K was the initial solution. This one. From this, you uh, took 25 centimeter cube. No? So the moles are still the same. Moles are not going to change. Right? So you write the same values here as well. 0 0.0107. Calculate the concentration of K. You know the moles, you know the volume. So N is equal to C into V. C is equal to N over V. N is 0 0.0107 and volume is how much? Uh, 20. 20 have to divide by 1000. And the answer would be 0 0.535. Okay. Uh, part K. A, a different student does the same experiment using 30 drops of methyl orange instead of 3 drops. Methyl orange is acidic, which will make the solution acidic. State if the average titration volume is smaller, larger, or unchanged when 30 drops of methyl orange were used. Obviously, the average titration volume would be larger because if you if the methyl orange is acidic and you are adding 30 drops, which means that the final solution will not be a neutral solution, will be an acidic solution. So when you're adding potassium hydroxide, you'll have to add more than more than before to neutralize uh, the acid and to neutralize the hydrogen ion. So you will write larger volume will be used will be used will be used as more potassium hydroxide as more KOH will be needed to neutralize the acidity created by 30 drops of methyl orange 30 drops of methyl orange okay uh, a student is provided with aqueous copper chloride aqueous zinc sulfate and aqueous solution labeled x the student tests the three solutions by adding each reagent shown in the table. So you added sodium hydroxide and there is a green precipitate. 
there is a green precipitate okay you added sodium hydroxide mm. or sodium hydroxide copper chloride is it blue in color it will give blue precipitates these type of questions are not going to come in exams anymore i don't think so because they are giving you the tables and zinc sulfate uh, will have zinc and will have white precipitates after that is saying that precipitate remains so that is for x uh, we'll have to check for copper chloride and zinc sulfate you added aqueous sodium hydroxide and excess what will happen is it precipitate with copper obviously uh, it is insoluble in excess right and zinc sulfate is uh, soluble in excess and then you added aqueous ammonia again copper will give white uh, sorry blue precipitates blue precipitate and uh, zinc will give white precipitate and when you add it excess uh, copper obviously will dissolve will dissolve to form dark blue solution to form dark blue solution okay and uh, this will also dissolve so it dissolve to form a colorless solution it is just too straight forward a question so this kind of question will not come anymore because they are giving you the tables okay uh, now you are adding silver nitrate uh, along with dilute nitric acid so now they are focusing on the anion part because they were focusing on the positive ion part right you can you can see that obviously with the test the sodium hydroxide and ammonia are used to test are used to test for the presence of cations now for silver nitrate and dilute nitric acid uh, silver chloride will be formed and that will have white precipitates and uh, with sulfate silver sulfate will be formed there actually be no change nothing will be seen the silver sulfate is, sol uh, is soluble in fact silver nitrate yeah silver sulfate is soluble with barium if you are adding barium nitrate barium chloride is formed now barium chloride is soluble in water so it will not show any precipitate so no change and but with uh, sulfate barium sulfate will produce white precipitates now you need to next you need to identify x what exactly is x it is giving yellow precipitate so with silver uh, nitrates so yellow precipitate means iodide the anion is iodide and the green precipitate means green precipitate means iron iron 2 okay so the identity identity of x will be iron iodide or fei2 iron 2 iodide or fei2 jo bhi likhna hai likh lo isko okay uh, when alcohol is burned they release heat a student uses the apparatus shown to investigate the amount of heat released in five different alcohols burned Okay, this is the two carbon atom or alcohol, and this three carbon atom alcohol, and different temperature rises. So, right. So, student determines the temperature rise of two hundred centimeter cube of water when alcohol burns. Obviously, alcohol is burning here, and it is obviously releasing heat, and that heat is being absorbed by water, and the water temperature is rising. From that, you are actually that from that you are connecting actually uh, you know alcohol with the temperature rise. With the help of water, so so it will be the uh, same amount for each alcohol. Plot the results on the grid. Circle the anomalous point on the grid. Draw a straight line of best fit. Okay, so two for two carbon atoms, the temperature rise is twenty five. This is thirty. This would be around twenty five. And for three carbon atoms, the temperature rise is forty six. This will be fifty, and this will be. 46 this will be 50 46 will be somewhere around there just uh, spare me some errors because obviously i am doing it digitally with four carbon atoms uh, temperature rise will be 53 50 is this and 53 would be somewhere here there for uh, five carbon atoms it will be 67 67 this is 65 this would be somewhere 67 No, this is seventy actually. Sorry, uh, mixed it up. So for five carbon atoms, sixty-seven. 
66, this is 60, 60, and this will be 70. 67 will be somewhere here. And then you'll have uh, six carbon atoms is 81, 81. This is 80, 81 will be like right above it. Now, what do you need to do? Ex okay, draw a line of, circle the anomalous point on the grid. What would be the anomalous point on the grid? Uh, anomalous point seems this way. Remaining uh, actually can't add straight line. If you use scale, you can draw a straight line. Okay, you, cannot, you will also have to extend the line. So just extend the line like this. Use a scale to get accurate values. Use the extended line to reduce the expected temperature rise if an alcohol is seven carbon atoms is used. If an alcohol is seven carbon atoms is used, what is the temperature rise? This is the temperature here. It is around 96. It's 96. Okay, you will just take it on the left. It will be 96. 96. The initial temperature of water is 15 degrees Celsius. Uh, Explain why this means it is not possible for the student to temperature rise in B1. Okay, so in B1, the line is extending, line can be extended beyond 100. So obviously water cannot uh, measure beyond 100. No? Why this means if the initial temperature of water is 15 degrees Celsius and the temperature rises keeps on happening, if temperature rises is happening till 96 for example so that is taking it beyond 100 degrees celsius right temperature rise means uh, that whatever was the initial temperature 96 degrees will be added to it right so that is taking the temperature beyond 100 which is the boiling point of water is saying explain why this means it is not possible for the student to obtain the temperature rise in b1 it's because uh, the boiling point of water is 100 the boiling point of water is 100. Water is 100. So you cannot near beyond that. So just one change that can be made to the experiment that would make it possible to obtain the temperature rise. Uh, 96, na? so it can measure up to 100 degrees Celsius. So if the initial temperature is 4 degree or less than 4 degree, then it can measure. So you can use ice or you can use Temp you can use temp initial temperature uh, less than 4 degrees Celsius. So you can use ice or water equal to or less than 4 degrees Celsius. You will write equal to and less than, equal to or less than. Okay. Uh, either say this that you can use also ice or a better one would be like use water equal to or less than 4 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that's all from this paper. I hope you had uh, had a good learning time. So inshallah, see you in the next video.